Good morning guys and uh, Mark here again and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, if you love cars and DIYs, please consider subscribing and check out my playlist. Alright, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, car parts, uh, what do they do, uh, what's the purpose of that uh, part in our car, uh, when to replace it, proper maintenance, etc. Alright, so for today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a um, radiator cap, a radiator pressure uh, cap. A few moments later. Alright guys, so we're going to talk about today the uh, purpose and uh, maintenance of a uh, radiator uh, pressure cap. Now, the the purpose of the the uh, radiator cap is basically to increase the uh, the the boiling point of the the liquid present on your um, cooling system, whether it be a coolant or a uh, or water. Um, your radiator cap is responsible on uh, basically. Uh, increasing the boiling point of the liquid and in doing so um, your car or basically your car um, is prevented from um, getting overheat and basically protecting your engine as well and also your radiator pressure cap um, prevents uh, fluids leaking uh, to your radiator. Um, let's go ahead and open this one. So this is actually my uh, original radiator cap from Mahi and De Eon. And let's just go through real quick the parts of the radiator cap. So we have two uh, sealing rubber you see this and this and there is a uh, vacuum valve which is this and a spring operated uh, pressure valve which is this this okay all right so basically the way uh, the radiator cap works is um, when the pressure inside your uh, radiator gets to the default settings of your radiator cap let's say for the original radiator cap we have 1.1 bar what does that mean it means um, before the valve or the, the pressure valve opens it would take around 16 psi uh, to basically push the valve upwards and uh, basically let the coolant uh, flow through uh, going to your overflow reservoir which is the coolant uh, reservoir now um, increasing the uh, pressure uh, inside your radiator basically increase the boiling capacity of the uh, the water or the coolant okay so if there if the radiator is not pressurized the boiling point of the water is around 100 and de uh, 100 degrees celsius if you increase the pressure uh to your radiator to 7 psi that's around 0.5 bar um you will increase the boiling capacity of the water basically from 100 to 112. now so if you put 15 psi of pressure you'll increase that from 100 to 120 so you'll be increasing the <clears throat> the boiling point of the uh, water to 120 degrees so what does this mean it means that um, your engine can operate to a higher uh, temperature without um, the water or the coolant turning into vapor okay or turning into steam basically um because the um if 
All right, so just in case you have a faulty radiator cap, what happens is, aside from that leaking out uh, coolant, um, it doesn't hold that pressure um, really, really good. So what happens is, instead of this valve opening up to basically release um, the hot coolant going to your uh, reservoir, it doesn't happen. So what happens is um, the, the pressure increases uh, and then coolant starting leaking out and um, the temperature on your radiator basically increase. Hence, uh, instead of cool water or cool or cold coolant going inside your engine, it would be hot coolant all the way. And if that boils, it will turn into steam and if there's no water or there's no liquid basically uh, absorbing the heat of the engine, that will damage your uh, engine. Uh, now, let's go ahead and run through the, the cycle of the cooling system together with your um, radiator cap. So what happens is um, the hot coolant from your engine goes to the, uh, the the bypass holes and then going through the top of your radiator um, on the Eon it's located right behind the radiator cap so what happens is um, the the uh, thermostat is closed <clears throat> so it doesn't really rotate that much the the thermostat remains closed until um, it reaches the or the engine reaches the optimum temperature which is around 250 degrees Fahrenheit I believe and once that is reached um, the thermostat which has a valve filled with wax the wax starts to melt down and then the thermostat slowly opens so once the thermostat slowly opens the coolant starts to flow freely and then goes to your radiator and the radiator basically cools the coolant down uh, going to your engine now um, as your engine runs of course the temperature increases especially if when you're stuck in traffic or driving directly into the sunlight um, what happens is uh, the pressure starts to build on your radiator um, and then your radiator cap comes into place um, if your radiator cap let's say this one is 1.1 uh, bar this is set up or the pressure valve is set up to open at around 16 psi so if the pressure uh, on your radiator basically reaches 16 psi the uh, pressure valve starts to open like this okay like that and then the coolant uh, flows um, across the uh, cap going going to basically your overflow reservoir or commonly called as the coolant reservoir so hot coolant goes to your uh, coolant reservoir and the rest goes down to your radiator um, releasing or basically um, cooling down the, uh, the the coolant and retaining the uh, pressure atmospheric pressure within your radiator uh, radiator and then once everything is cooled down or uh, while your engine is cooling down the uh, the vacuum valve which is this tiny plate opens up or this is actually being sucked back out like that and then what happens is the uh, coolant from your reservoir flows back in um, on your radiator goes into the cycle as well and uh, basically uh, the cycle will repeat so once again if you're if you reach the 16 psi uh, limit this opens up and so on and so forth so that's how it works or this is how it works now 
there's no specific time frame on when to replace your uh your radiator cap but for me this should be replaced at least uh every three years um this is really really cheap uh it's only you'll be able to buy this at around 100 to 180 pesos depending on the brand um that you'll you'll be buying okay later all right so when replacing your radiator cap please 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 um always um replace this um it's either gonna be the same uh, might be a bit lower maybe point zero point nine or one point two but that's basically it um what's the effect okay um just like i mentioned earlier increasing the pressure inside your <clears throat> uh radiator will increase the boiling capacity of the liquid or the fluid inside your cooling system but if you decrease the uh, pressure inside your radiator or your cooling system, basically, you'll also be decreasing the boiling capacity of the fluids flowing through your, excuse me, flowing through your um, uh, cooling system. Now, um, if you increase, let's say, from 1.1, you increase it to 2.6, let's just say. So you'll be increasing the pressure inside your cooling system from uh, 16 PSI to 37 PSI. So, it, so that's more than twice as much. Um, so instead of you having um, 100 degrees Celsius boiling point, you'll have 140. So that's 40 degrees more. Um, so that's good, right? Because you'll be able to uh, prevent overheat or the engine can operate at a higher temperature. Um, that's a big no-no, especially if you're using your stock um, tubes or inlets, basically. What happens is the pressure inside, imagine 37 PSI. Uh, what if the, the tubes, the bypass tubes, the radiator hose, is not meant to or not designed to handle that much pressure what will happen is um you'll just blow off the the hoses and in uh as a result you'll just uh damage your engine blow up your uh blow up the radiator and so on so what if it's lower if it's lower and if you're not driving in a uh you know uh, in the middle of the desert, 0.9 would be fine, I think, here in the Philippines. Even if it's summer, 0.9 would be fine. But again, um, the engine or the radiator is designed to have a 1.1 bar. So replace it with this one, okay? Um, the only time that you'll change this is um, if you have no choice. As much as possible, get the 1.1 bar. Okay, because engineers designed it that way, um, it's um, it's not ideal for us to you know um, uh, play around with, uh, especially that one since we're dealing with uh, atmospheric pressure. But for me, 0.9 or 1.2 would be fine. Okay, not not that too high, but not that too low as well. Okay, and aside from that. The 0.9 cap is much cheaper than the 1.1. Alright, so what else What else did we miss? So, yeah, this should be replaced for me at least every three years. And um, as you can see, the uh, rubber seals are already worn out. They already have like grooves. Um, this one can't handle uh, that much pressure anymore and also you can see on the um, the pressure valve it's already corroded like that it's already corroded okay so I got a, a federal mogul which is a, a good brand uh, radiator cap I purchased this for 180 pesos um, there is a cheaper 
cheaper cap. Um, it's 100 pesos, but I um, opted to get the uh, better brand because um, the this cap would last for three years, and um, the 100 bucks. I'm not sure if that's gonna last that long. Um, and just make sure that the uh, cap that you'll be buying is the vacuum valve is made out of stainless as well as the stud in the middle okay because if it's made out of steel it will corrode in time and um the uh, vacuum valve will be dislodged and might damage your uh radiator okay so yeah that that's all that's all for today um i hope you like the video uh i hope you find it useful if you do, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I do read your comments uh, every day. And uh, I try to, I basically reply to every comment. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you have any suggestions, please, please uh, feel free to let me know. Um, aside from parts talk, um, we will continue the uh, review series on uh, products and uh, let me see if I still have anything that I know that I can do for our DIY um, for the oil change and gear oil change. I just changed my uh, lubes about a few months ago. So if um, I will be changing oil, I'll make sure to make a video for you guys. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, until our ne next video, again, this is Mark. Uh, thank you so much. And um, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing.